so, hello everyone. Thanks for attending to this session. Um, I'm uh, Romain Dunant from One More Thing. I've been a FileMaker developer since 2004. Uh, I joined One More Thing in 2014, uh, joined with Fabrice and Tongi. Uh, and uh, I'm the tech guy which is behind uh, fmcloud.fm, our hosting service. Uh, and I'm also a big fan of web development uh, and JavaScript. So uh, today I will talk to you about uh, uh, a very interesting uh, function uh, that you can use with FileMaker. Uh, so the name of the session is Anonymous Function, and you will see a bit later that it's not exactly uh, the key point here, but uh, let me explain this uh, it starts with a single tweet in uh, January uh, this year uh, from FileMaker magazine um, they were just saying hey did you know that uh, you can use uh, anonymous GS function in uh, in, uh, in FileMaker so okay, wow it blew my mind okay, no really we can use it I didn't thought it was possible and it, it really changed the things because uh, at the very beginning I've always thought that to interact with a, a page in a web viewer, you had first to know, uh, to have built your own pages to add function in the, the web viewer, or to, um, well, to, to look at the page and see what the, the people who made the page uh, makes available for you. Uh, so it was a bit limiting. So before we dive into the subject, I just want to remember how uh, is working the, the perform JavaScript in web viewer function. So the perform JavaScript in a web viewer function needs, well, first a named web viewer. So you put the web viewer on the page and you give it a name. Just remember, don't mismatch with the other box, which is uh, below, uh, which is a tooltip box. It happens to me quite often. Uh, and then the function will take the web viewer name, so the name you gave to the object, the GS function name, and uh, you will be able to add any parameters. Uh, keep in mind that the, those parameters will always be uh, translated to text uh, to your uh, JavaScript function, So, if, which means if you pass some JSON, the JSON will be text in the JavaScript, so we'll have to parse it to, to make it worse. So, uh, small example here, the perform JavaScript in a web viewer using uh, a web viewer called WV. The function name, just here, I got a little typo, which is alert. So it's a pre-existing uh, JavaScript function, uh, which is always available. And uh, we'll pass it a parameter, hello world. So this piece of code here will be translated to this in the web page and executed. Small example here. So uh, interesting point here first. <coughs> I am in an empty web viewer. I can try to right click. There's nothing. My URL here is totally empty. And the JavaScript engine of the web viewer is already available. So here, my function, which I will execute, is alert with a, a single parameter. And if I run it, I have my alert box, which shows up. So that means even with nothing in the web viewer, you can execute your function. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, kind of, sometimes. <laughs> and so if we want to have a like spin reading at the point where you try to run it, actually it doesn't work, it's going to work, it's going to run your function. Yeah, because sometimes it, it needs to be, uh, if I make a construct the object and it's not available. Because when uh, at the very beginning it loads the web viewer, then it waits until it's ready to inject the function, if I make functions. So, when it's here, it's already uh, you can already perform JavaScript, but you may not be able to use the callback function. The FileMaker perform script with option. Okay, so if you like went to a layer to the, the web view and called it immediately, but you may not. Sometimes, yeah. 
Uh, we I discovered recently that FileMaker likes pause in the code. <laughs> you always have to pause until it loads and then it works. <laughs> but not only for the web viewer, for many other things. Uh, so the key point here is is not really self uh, um, anonymous function, but it's self executing function, which is the the, the key point uh, for for working here. A self-executing function in, uh, in JavaScript is a function which is declared and called on the fly. So you write a function and say execute it. It won't persist after it was uh, executed. It's not declared, it's not stored anywhere. You just run it on the fly and go. Uh, the syntax is pretty strange. You put in some parentheses your code and then you add an extra parenthesis at the end. And everything which is inside here will be executed immediately. So, one example here would be alert. I wrap the alert function uh, inside my braces and then I call it and I can pass a parameter. So the message parameter here will be passed to the function alert here. And it will execute. Uh, of course, this is a very simple example, but you can use again anonymous function. So you build your own function with no name. You can set as much parameter as you need. Put your code into the square bracket here, and then call it with your parameters. So if we go back to what I explained earlier here, what you have here is almost what we did. The alert here is what we will have here, this part. So actually, you write your function, put it into braces, and just put it in the function name of the perform uh, JavaScript. If I go into here, the dialog box, so this is where you put your code into parentheses. You need just to put the parentheses and the, the first one, of course, not the second one, because FileMaker, we add the, uh, the other parentheses with the parameters at the end. So this part here is the second part of the, the self-executing function is where it's called. So sim short example here. My web viewer is still empty. Here is the function that I will pass, the function name I will pass to my uh, perform JavaScript function. Function here, message, alert message. Okay, very simple. I run it and I got the, the alert box. Okay. Another point interesting here, before we go to deep dive. Um, the FileMaker perform script with option is also available when the web viewer is empty. So you can already perform a callback to FileMaker to, uh, so it means you can run some JavaScript and have a callback to FileMaker. Another example here, so uh, is it, uh, I will hope you will see better. So my self-executing function We'll just call back FileMaker with FileMaker perform script option, calling a script which is named callback, and just pass uh, as a parameter a simple string with the message which was the parameter I said. So if I execute this one, up. now my callback just pop up a, a new card window and set a field with the message which was. Uh, the parameter which was in the, the callback. So, uh, <clears throat> this is where it, the things get really interesting because now that you know that you can execute everything you want in the web viewer, even if you're not the one who built the page, so you can do a, everything you want. For instance, here, get the, the speakers list and I would like to grab all the names and photos to get it back to FileMaker. 
Well, you could, of course, you could just take the content of the of the browser and try to pass your HTML code. Uh, it's a bit, how uh, to say, a bit difficult, I think, when you have this kind of code because we don't have an XML function that, uh, well, unless you use a pure plugin, it's pretty hard to <coughs> scrap and uh, and pass all the HTML code. So let's instead use all the JavaScript function that are really efficient when it, uh, it comes to uh, uh, manipulate the HTML. So here, I just built a small function. As you can see, it's, it's pretty small. Pretty small. I just need to query my HTML to find all these, uh, so the, the element where the, um, uh, the speakers are stored, and then have a simple loop put my result into a, a JavaScript object, and then pass it back to FileMaker. Oh, if I play, okay, I have my JSON with all people here. Just pay attention in this example. <coughs> Please zoom in a bit, please. Yeah. Okay. The thing here is that when we call perform script with option to call back FileMaker, FileMaker only accepts, only um, knows about a uh, string. We don't, we don't know what a, a JSON object is. So if you only put your result, which is an object here, JavaScript will translate it into string as an object object. So you won't have your result. So you just need to use a JSON stringify, which will take you the, the JSON object and translate it to text, then pass it to your, uh, as a parameter for FileMaker. So that's just the, 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 the thing you have to know here. Okay. Um, so let's get another example here. Um, instead of grabbing the content, I will try here to uh, count how many attendees there's in the. So here I can see in my page, uh, so they put the list of the attendees. So I just need to inspect how the page was made. And I see here, okay, it's a table. It's a table with a T body, and it looks like uh, each uh, attendee is in a tier row. So I guess if I want to count how many attendees there are, I just need to count how many uh, rows I have in this table. So here, <coughs> again, it's pretty short code. I just need to get my T body tr. If this, the query selector here will say, okay, find an object, um, <coughs> an element with the entry content <coughs> uh, class name, then Oh yeah, sorry. You just change the resolution of the of your map. So the low resolution oh. and everything blows up. Okay. I'll try this one also. Okay. Okay. Okay, easier. <laughs> Scale maybe. Sounds better? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is it good? <coughs> right. So, uh, as I was saying, so the query selector here, uh, I encourage you to, to, to learn how it works uh, query selectors and CSS uh, to, 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 to figure out how web page are working, but here if you, <coughs> the dot entry content means there's an element which, ha which has the class entry content. Inside that element, look for a t-body element and then grab all the tier element which are the rows of the table. So here, the attendees here will contain all the rows and then I will be able to grab the results 
just send back a string with the attendee length to my FileMaker. And let's see here. Oh, there is 124 attendees. Um, <coughs> it may, I don't know if you are all uh, JavaScript uh, friendly uh, developers. Um, just keep in mind, it's pretty easy to try your code without uh, with a few effort. When you are in your uh, browser, you can load a page. Just go into the dev tools of your uh, browser. I get here this one, for instance. Uh, let's go to the uh, same page here. Attendees. <coughs> so when I, when I develop, most of the time I, I'm not doing it directly into FileMaker. I just go to the, the console here. I I look at what I have in the page. For instance, here I will go inspect the element and say, okay, this is okay. It looks like it's an article with an ID that the div class entry. So I say, okay, what's what do I get if I type this function in the console? So query selector, okay, query selector, and then. So I see here, okay, it gives me um, a, a, an element. And if you <coughs> go over it, it's highlighted in your page, so you know exactly where you are. So I can continue and say, okay, my query selector, now uh, I will add the T-body. Okay, the T-body looks like it's all my content, okay. And then the TR, <coughs> and I will just transform it to, okay, all. Uh, the function is not yet executed, but I have here an insight because it shows me everything I will have in the result. So that's how I can now see, okay, I have all the elements here and I can just go inside each of them to see what I have. So that's a very good way. You can do it everywhere on any website. Um, you will figure out how the page was constructed and how you can uh, then scrap some data inside or interact because it's not only about scrapping the data it's also about interacting with your pages so let's go back here and we'll close the inspector okay yeah I was just saying the you can actually enable the inspector to the web viewer yeah. inside Polymer so it's a relatively simple test um, see with MBS Oh, you can do it just manually, basically. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was not working anymore. Yeah, it seems to me. Yeah, okay. Well, I use MBS, it works very well, also. <laughs> if, you, if you want to, yeah. If you want. Yeah, well, on Windows, yes. But because we now have the new uh, um, Chrome engine. Because before, when it was Internet Explorer, you couldn't even debug anything, and so, and now, now I, I really would like they, they bring it to uh, to um, to macOS, because uh, I hate WebKit. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. So here, yeah, just to show you, I'm you I'm using MBS uh, simple function web view set preference. You give the web viewer name and developer extra enable. This allows you to use the uh, the inspector inside your web uh, browser, uh, uh, your web viewer. So uh, as you can see here, uh, I don't know why it's sometimes slow. Okay. Yeah, perhaps no, because I, even with uh, local HTML code, I have this uh, the issue too. It's quite slow. I've noticed the same. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So okay, so you mean the the no, it's it's not loaded from uh, the outside, it's no. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So, Uh, you mean to wait until it's declared? Yeah. Yeah, would you keep the script line and then get the script result, or would you just let the script end and then wait to call it that script and find the script again? Would you get the same? Uh, no, I don't. Don't really get the point. Uh, so you you would the web view that loads. Yeah. You'd call the script and find it and say I want to get. Okay. Script. Yeah. Okay. But then it would tell the web view to do something, and if it's asynchronous, to the parameter your script to finish, and then you get called a new script. Yeah, we'll call a new script to because yeah, you it it can't wait. wait, it can't wait. So uh, you have to just have your callback. It's it's always as asynchronous. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah. oh, okay. Um. So just to finish with the dev tools here. So yeah, if I right click on my page, I only have the reload option, and using the MBS here, just click, and now I have the inspect element which allows me to, to see what's in, in the page. Okay, autofill a form. So let's say you have some form and you want to automate the process of filling it and submitting it. Here, get uh, our small uh, our, um, well, calculator, which gives you the price of our hosting. And uh, well, again, it's, uh, it's pretty um, simple to, okay, to, to get the element, find, What's the name of each input in the uh, in the page? Set the value. Yeah, we'll set the region to Sydney, the currency to Euro, the number of users to fifteen. Then my email, and check the checkbox. Uh, just here we have some. I added some dispatch event because it's using uh, Vue.js uh, and. It needs some event to be triggered, uh, so it the, the, the value are stored inside the JavaScript code. And when I play, yep, everything is has been populated. I can even click on the button if I want. I will just show you now uh, how it can be done. So I'm looking at my page, uh, and I will see here. Okay, my button, it's a button which is inside the calculator. Well, I guess I have only one button, so I will just try to see if I'm right. Document.query selector. Okay, let's find the uh, element with ID calculator. And inside that one, the button. Okay, looks like there's only, no. I'll use the all to be sure that it's the only one. Yeah, it's the only one. So I can use this selector here. And inside my code, I should be now able to say, okay, document query selector calculator button, then say click. And hopefully it should trigger the button here. No, why? Am I still in the? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. So here, I just push the click, and now I have the pricing. So, uh, this is an example. Uh, I saw one one day on the TV show uh, a lawyer, which was automated process to. People were coming into his website just to claim for uh, some uh, <coughs> some things, and he just had a form. The people were filling the form, and he had a, a Mac which was running and going into the government website and filling the form with some text of his own, and just he was selling this like uh, 500 euros, and everything was automated. I said, "Wow!" But now we can do it with FileMaker too. <laughs> So I think it could be something very interesting for your customers, uh, uh, even for your own, if you if you need it. Um, okay, another example here: uh, customize a web page. Let's say here the, the Google homepage. 
well, as you can interact with JavaScript, you can do everything you want in any pages, even Google one. So here, let's change the logo and remove the, the bar here. Okay, click. Okay, now it's one more thing page. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Uh, look, it's as easy as this. Only four lines of code. Just going the function, find the image tag, replaces with my own images, find another one, which is here the yeah, was the, the, the toolbar, and just say okay, I I this one. Very simple, no? Okay, let's find another example, a bit harder. You can run some script, but sometimes you will need some, to use some custom libraries, not of your own, and can load them inside one function, or perhaps you could, but it would be a bit complicated. But in fact, you can use the functions to inject any other libraries from everywhere. So here, in this example, I will just inject a PDF library that will save the page as PDF and call back my FileMaker to get the PDF. So, how? No, let's run it first to see if it works properly. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, the PDF is not really nice, but I can open it in preview so you can see that yes it's a PDF <laughs> um, whoop, where am I okay so the thing here in my code as we can mani manipulate the HTML code we can create a script element give it um, the, 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 the URL of the library I want to load so here is the PDA, JS PDF library uh, and another one which is HTML to PDF so I create an element I append it to my pages to the body of the pages and the browser will automatically load the element so if it calls here uh, a script it will load the JavaScript then once it's done it's available so I can now uh, use the, the, the library functions to interact. Here, just a little thing, it's asynchronous. You add the element to your page, it will load uh, in a background process, so your code here will continue to run, so it won't be available immediately. So yeah, just I just put into a set interval, which is a, a little timer, uh, and I say, okay, I declare a save PDF function which will use uh, ensure both libraries are available and then say okay uh, take the page create the PDF and then when the PDF is ready call back FileMaker with a save PDF uh, save PDF function in my FileMaker and just pass the, the PDF as uh, base64 encoded data Uh, yeah, and if it's done, I clear the interval. The interval will repeat each time uh, until I release it. So this means here I will wait uh, 100 milliseconds, try to save the PDF. If the libraries are not yet loaded, it will stop and it will run again uh, in 100 milliseconds. But if everything is good and is working it will just stop the timer and here I have some just some uh, few uh, options for my uh, have you put, uh, uh, compare those two uh, yes uh, not, not really actually uh, I just wanted to find one which was working properly <laughs> well or at least which was working as I expected uh, that was just for the demo so I didn't dive too much into into this 
Richtung, ich think it was like a, an event that was good for us, was really to see like, to get more and more events, I think. So it's relevant to like the way we do it. Yeah, so yeah. It's still the promise. The uh, promise, well, yeah. Yeah, so With many, many ways to spin a rabbit, if you can. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to find one simple here. Yeah. And it depends, sometimes the libraries have options uh, to do it, so yeah. One thing I've got a very general point with uh, JavaScript is a bit like my mother, in, in that as soon as you do something wrong, stop talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, 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 the set element is quite handy because there'll be a debug console that tells you what, because JavaScript stops as soon as you yeah. have an error. And, and yeah, and stop everything. Yeah. So sometimes handy. So that you know, line seven, yeah. you didn't do with the syntax error at line six. Yeah. Oh, interesting thing. Uh, <coughs> uh, I, I don't think I know if you noticed uh, earlier, but here <coughs> when I pass my uh, my content, I, I just substitute all these characters. Uh, the uh, well, the carriage return, the answer chart, and because. I was running my script, it was running fine when I was outside the web viewer, but then when I ran it in the web viewer, it was always not working with some strange uh, code issues. Uh, <clears throat> and I had to put uh, the, I uh, don't know uh, how, how it's going to be, this, the, how it's called? Not remember. Semicolon. Semicolon, yeah. Uh, because actually the, the, the carriage return of FileMaker was not the one which is used by the WebKit. So it thought everything was in one line. And if you don't put the semicolon, <coughs> it's waiting, you think it's on, always on the same line and try to execute. So I had to just translate it so it was working properly. And now I don't need uh, those semicolons anymore. <coughs> so here, uh, another example. Uh, to interact with web page, uh, well, I can find my Google ranking. Say, okay, uh, where uh, where is um, the EngageU website when uh, we? Whoop. Will I anyway? It will work. Google will understand me. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, where where is this website? When I look at FileMaker from conference, so okay, it's loading the page. Okay, it's ranking two because it can find it. Uh, yeah, yeah. First first response and second response. Just need to scrap a little bit the results, but the thing is here again, if you try to do it the old way, like getting the HTML content with uh, with Google, you won't find anything because it's all loaded by JavaScript. So FileMaker don't have the HTML content. So here, pretty simple. I call the page, wait until it's loaded, then look like for some uh, development inside the <coughs> inside the result, and just search. Look to all the result, search, and return the response. So you can try it with your own website or anything and you can also automate it. Uh, well, the thing is, as it's, uh, it needs a web viewer, you won't be able to use it uh, on server side, unfortunately, because there's no, uh, no web viewer inside the, <coughs> the, the FileMaker script engine on the server. Okay, another way to use such function is to just use the JavaScript uh, power <coughs> to process data. Like, uh, well, you can have a big, big um, uh, JSON object and want to summarize the item inside it. So if you use some FileMaker loop to do it, it will be very long. Uh, for instance, here uh, I would like to um, to yes to have the sum of the sales from the, a JSON object. If I go here in the background, you see I have a, my parameter will be a, a big JSON, so I have like ten ten thousand rows, I guess. Yeah, 
ten thousand volts, and just I can just play it. It's almost instant. <laughs> I think it's uh, yeah. <coughs> As fast as just running a, a single line uh, of script, so you can, yeah, of course you can do it. You can transform JSON, use all the JSON, uh, yeah, JSON function uh, that exists inside the JavaScript engine to uh, do uh, everything you want, process complex operation, and you will get the, um, the things done almost in instantly so uh, last example here um, yeah it was pretty fast um, you can inject some code and you it doesn't have to do a callback just when you you throw it it can put some elements inside the page then you will be able to use it uh, here I will uh, just reuse the example I had with a PDF but instead of just calling it from FileMaker, I will just inject the button in the page. Uh, then the user will be able to click on the button when he wants to get the content. So, uh, okay, I just click. I don't know if you notice here, there's a new, if I reload the page, no make PDF, run, make PDF is here. So now I can click on the button. Okay, I get the content of my page. I can go to another page. It's still here. It's still here because the website is made with view and uh, uh, this is a single page app. So when the, the browser URL changed, actually it does not create the full, uh, full page, it just changed the, the content. So I still have my make PDF here and I can call it again to get the content and so on. So this example is pretty simple, but the idea here is that you can make want to create a widget for your user to be there, for instance, allows you allowing few actions for him and being able to interact with your file maker inside the pre-existing web page, which is not your. Uh, go into the code here. So again, I load my libraries. Everything here is almost the same. Uh, the part here is where I create my button inject it inside the menu bar, the nav bar of the, the website, and just, uh, well, bind my function button on click, and I bind the save as PDF. So the function here, run, it does not exist anymore inside the, the web viewer, but what I have declared inside here, I used save as PDF. I didn't put the let or set uh, uh, keyword, so the the function is saved inside the window of the of the browser so it's saved outside of the of the, the self-executing function and it persists across the uh, across the session so now yeah, i can for instance call it manually inside the console of the, the browser it will be still here but everything everything else won't be uh, available anymore and well, that's it. <laughs> Would you like to see more examples? Do uh, you have ideas of what we could try to do? Uh, Custom sliding. Custom? Custom sliding. Custom sliding. Custom sliding. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Custom. Oh, yeah, why not? Um, on wh which website could we do this? Uh, Clavis one? <laughs> okay, let's try it. Clavis.com. Oh no, this website is too slow. <laughs> so, uh, yes, would like a uh, one to change the header color, for instance. Yeah. Yeah, okay. What color do you like? Pink. <laughs> of course, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. So, uh, okay, we have the body, we have the header here, so I guess we can get the uh, up, uh, query selector. Um, well, it's 
just the header, I guess. I think the first one would be the, the good one. Okay. Let's get it. And we'll do it here. Uh, don't forget this. Okay. So. Uh, okay, we get the header here, and now let's say, oh yeah, we'll we be able to choose the color from Pi Meter. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so let's take it, okay, and say, okay, navbar dot uh, background. Uh, I think it's like that. Color, bow, and okay hello yeah I think that it should work uh, we'll just oh yes you're right I think it's the side yeah I will add it just which color you know the existence color of the pink oh pink yeah you're right okay Okay. Oops. What uh, function? Uh. You've got it inside the right function here? No. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so here, yeah, like that? No. Oh, yeah, this is the guy where I'm looking at the Line 4 here. Yeah, that's what it was before. No, I'm already inside the. I got the function here, so I have the function. I had the parentheses here. Yeah, and then the extra parentheses at the end. Oh, no, yeah. this one are passed by FileMaker. Oh. You don't need it here. This is this is the first pass. It is the function name. So the extra parentheses, where the um, the script the par script parameter will be passed. This is FileMaker's part. So well, let's just try to debug. debug. Yeah. Okay. If I query selector, okay, this is it. Okay. And if I say okay, uh, style. Background color. It worked here, so the code seems to be pretty good. I will just take it here. Uh, is it pink now? Yeah, it's pink. Okay, nice, good. Okay, uh, oh, okay, got it. I just forgot to click the save button. <laughs> In my first, uh, I, I did this show uh, on the at the um, uh, at Berlin, uh, the .fmp, um, and I, I made a thing uh, just when I, I was blurring the the, uh, the the script editor. It was going to save into my FileMaker, but it was not working. Very, very well and sometimes I, I used to lose my code because when I switched from one record to another it was triggering the, 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 the action so I just now put the save button and wait until it's properly saved okay uh, reload the page and now no 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 oh yeah yeah okay it's working <laughs> Of course, you could load. Now you can rename the file maker button, so it's like right again. Ah, oh. yeah, it's an image here. I can put one more thing. <laughs> yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, it's Clarice, Clarice, Clarice. Yeah. No, you want to rename something? No. No. Okay. Just, just an idea. There's a JavaScript library called Eraser. It's a way of injecting like a developer code. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. How you call it? Uh, E-R-E-A. U D. Like like this? No. E R E D A. U. Hey. Sorry. Anyway. Okay. This one. Yeah. Okay. So you can inject it inside the. Oh here. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to know, to see if, the, if there was the uh, uh, how do you say the, the uh, a way to load it. There's a new URL to load to load the. Okay. Where is the script tag? You can give it some. Wait. Okay, I guess on the GitHub page. Okay, this, I guess. So, um, took, let's get a new page. We will duplicate this one. Um, put our code here. So, I don't need this. Uh, I guess I don't need this one too. Okay. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And if I clear this, oh yeah, it's here. Good. Good idea. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know about that one. It's uh, yeah, great. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Any other example you would like to to see? Let's do it in a. So I will update the session for the download. Wow, I think we're done. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, I, I'm thinking about a calculation in FileMaker which w could be uh, faster than JavaScript. Uh, it's it's clearly more efficient, yeah. Because they. Yeah. Yeah, but in other in other cases, I I don't I don't see when it could be. Uh, well, of course, if you need to grab some data from FileMaker to. <laughs> Could be faster with uh, with FileMaker, but uh, you know, processing uh, processing large amounts of data and uh, having big calculation, manipulating JSON. There's no no way FileMaker can be fi faster than JavaScript. Okay. Have you done some simulations to reduce uh, uh, data requests? Data requests. Yeah. Requests to get the JSON back. You know. Yeah. Then you manipulate. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you can get your your JSON. Yeah, you can call the the, the data API from FileMaker from the from the, the server. Yeah, or all data also. Yeah. Everything. Any any API calls, actually, you can make API calls. So. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So. 
Yeah. It's pretty good. Nine.